I, I gave him the. Yeah. I thought. Uh, if you want, if you want to sneak out after we start. I'm first on the bus on the school side. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to our Tuesday, April 10th regular business meeting. Please um, join me and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We are short two board members, but we have a healthy quorum, so we'll continue with our night. Um, may I have, um, if there are any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, seeing none. Um, may I have a motion for number two, approval to school board minutes? I move we approve the school board minutes from uh, our agenda item two. May I have a second? Any discussion? No, seeing none. All those in favor? Um, next is comments from our student representative. Hi, um, so Emily has a lacrosse scrimmage tonight, so she won't be here. Um, and really just a couple quick updates from the high school. Uh, things are going well. We're excited that it's almost springtime, almost. <laughs> um, so today, as I'm sure you guys all know, we took, the juniors took the SAT, um, and I think for the most part that went really well. Um, the AC has been doing a great job getting students ready, um, both students who have been assigned there after the PSAT scores were released, who need just like an extra boost, and also students who are just looking to get some studying in regardless of their PSAT scores. Um, Ms. Raspiller, Mr. Jones, um, and a lot of other faculty have been really in instrumental in um, helping to link the College Board accounts with the Khan Academy, so it like creates a tailored um, practice set for you, um, so you really can capitalize on the time you spend doing that and not just doing problems that you know how to do. Um, so that's been super helpful, and I think a lot of students have benefited from that. Um, and also the spring, spring sports season um, is officially underway. Uh, most of the fields have cleared off by now, um, <laughs> so teams are practicing outside. Um, a couple things happened this weekend, a couple events. So first, the New England Youth Identity Summit, which is um, put on by Wayne Fleet School and Seeds of Peace um, together. And it was, Friday night was performances, and then Saturday was all day. There were workshops and the keynote speakers and lunch. Um, and it was a really, really cool event. I got to go to some of it. Um, there was everything from learning differences to learning about different religions to spoken word and poetry and dance. Um, so that was really, really cool. Um, and there were students, I think, from over 30 schools there. Um, so that was really cool to see. Um, additionally, the four students who were chosen to participate in the Can We project um, that I told you a little bit about last time um, attended their second retreat this weekend, um, which was also at Wayne Fleet, so that was all sort of going on at the same time. Um, but the third and final event is on May 10th at the Westbrook Performing Arts Center, um, and it will be a dialogue with the gubernatorial candidates um, discussing issues on education reform, gun policy, racial equity, um, and the opi opioid crisis, um, and some other hot topic issues um, in politics right now. So I think it'll be really interesting um, to see all those people come together. 
and that's students, four students from Cape and then students from around southern, other schools in Southern Maine as well. Um, and then lastly this weekend, a group of students went to Dartmouth College um, for a Model UN conference. I haven't heard how that went though, so I can't give you an update on that, but. What sort of conference was it? Model UN, oh. Model United Nations, yeah. It's led by Miss Oliver. Um, and then lastly, um, last Friday, the Don Richards Pool, um, the Special Olympics Cumberland County Swim event was hosted, um, and two high schoolers and four middle school students swam. Um, and I got a chance to be there for most of the day volunteering, um, and it, it was just an in incredible event, like always. Dave Croft, who's, I think, a staff at all three schools, um, puts that on with the help of the swim teams um, and some other people help out as well and it, it just is always such an incredible event. Um, and then up ne next for the Special um, Olympics will be the track and field event. So as soon as it warms up a little outside, they'll start practicing on the track um, and then they'll go to the event in May at Bon Eagle. That's all I have for you tonight. Thanks Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next on the agenda um, is the opportunity for the public to make comments from um, or uh, comments on agenda items. Okay, seeing none. Um, then we will move on to communications. Uh, the high school um, greenhouse is on the list. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address the school board this evening to bring a request for permission to pursue the construction of a greenhouse at the high school. For several years as a biology teacher, I've envisioned what the addition of such a facility could, could provide to enhance the life science curriculum of not only the high school biology courses, but also the science experiences of students from the middle school in Pond Cove. Additionally, uh, additional use of the greenhouse could include students in our life skills programs, the extended school year garden projects, student-driven learning projects, independent studies options, and maybe a botany horticultural class similar to what some of our students pursue at PAVS, to name but a few of the many ideas that the greenhouse generates. My vision is for a substantial structure built to last for years that could accommodate groups of students and be a fully functional science lab and greenhouse. The greenhouse would use green technology and become as self-sustaining as, self as possible. Additional cold frames and raised beds directly outside the greenhouse could extend the growing season for root vegetables, greens, and herbs for our cafeterias. I would like to have permission to begin exploring concept designing with local engineering and design companies to seek grants and begin fundraising from individuals, businesses, and organizations to assemble an advisory board from various community members with interests and experience in the diverse agricultural and gardening endeavors in Cape Elizabeth, and to organize a botany club from high school students to help support the greenhouse from year to year. I plan to apply for a SEAF grant to help with some of the costs of this project once sufficient details are in place. I would hope to also have a way for financial donations to be deposited into an account at the central office designated for this project and to be tax deductible. There are obviously many moving parts to such an undertaking as this. Each conversation sparks ideas and enthusiasm for what a greenhouse could provide to our school community. I would love to continue those conversations, visit other schools and organizations with greenhouses, gather ideas for building and use of one for us, learn about greenhouse management and provide the leadership for this project. Thank you for considering this proposal and for your support of our school district. I would be happy to answer questions and continue hearing ideas from all of you as we move forward. Thank you very much. I commend you for this endeavor. And I've always been um, very admiring of the PAS program and have wished that more people um, could access it. And I, I think if we could create something similar here that would be accessible to all grades would be ideal. Thank you. I have a question, yes. uh, a few questions. Uh, 
greenhouse location, size, and whether this will be open to all other students in the middle school and lower schools. And more importantly, uh, we seem to have a lot of farms around us. Do you think it would be best to locate on the farm, or is it you want it on the school premise? And those are all great questions, and um, some of those are ideas I've been bouncing around, but I haven't had an opportunity to talk to too many other people yet. Um, I wanted to get permission to pursue those conversations and talk to people who are involved in greenhouses. Um, personally, I would like to see it right at the high school, so we could use it directly with our schools, and our one campus setting allows students to come over from the middle school or Pond Cove pretty easily. But I would like it to look like a science lab. I would like it nice. to be connected to the school and very functional as a lab, um, not something that stands out in the field with plastic blowing in the wind. Um, I'd like okay. to see a, a real substantial structure that would last for a long time. Great, thank you. May, may I speak? Sure. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity to um, meet, I don't know, maybe it was a week ago or so with Mr. Barrington, and um, I, I'm very attracted to this proposal. I, I, he really um, understands that he can't really move forward without your endorsement. And I know tonight that's not requested, but um, if there is certain information that you would find to be helpful for you to be able to say that you either do or don't support him going forward with this, perhaps you could, um, could, could forward those, that list to Mr. Brinton. I, I, uh, would like to bring it back maybe in, in, in May, if that doesn't seem too soon, or if you want the June meeting, but it would be nice to kind of have this thing, either it's got promise and please go forward and, and uh, advance this and seek support, or this isn't the right time, I don't know what, but he, he, he needs to know if, it's, if he has your blessing to move forward. I, I would I would say we would definitely be able to go one way or the other by the next May meeting. I mean, myself off the cuff, I would say absolutely. But you know, let's get give time for the other board members who are not here and give ample time for right. for thought. But okay, so far so good. Let's shoot for May. So, and if there are questions, they would be sent. Um, just is it under W or B? W. Brinton. Or would it be better to send them to Susanna to, okay. to funnel? Okay. Because we all might have the same question, so it gets sent. Okay. I think that makes sense. And then you'll send them forward. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. More work for Susanna. <laughs> so I was just going to um, just briefly mention it's something I would certainly support. It sounds like at this point your next steps are to sort of get a read on us, and I think we're supportive. And then after that is to begin Start to get, gather, gather information. information. Yeah. And, and um, as you're sort of looking at the uh, facility usage and SEEF grants, and one of the challenges of some of this is make sure that we're all integrated and working on the same page. So exactly. I encourage you as you go forward to make sure that you know, everyone's clear that this is all integrated with our facilities director and and it's, it's every, everything's yeah. working together. I, 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 I wouldn't expect anything else, but I, I wouldn't want to start doing any of that. I don't understand, no, but I want to be clear that as it goes forward, that's what we would like to see yeah. and, and, would, and would expect, and so, <laughs> so that we can be fully behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good idea. Thank you very much. Okay. Principal updates. Seems like it's been a while since I've done this. It's like <laughs> the first time. Uh, there's a lot going on this time of year at the middle school, probably at every school. Uh, but one of the one of the things that we've kind of um, I think get a little momentum behind right now in supporting is the Festival of Curiosity that's going to come up on June 1st. Uh, I think our teachers are starting to really <coughs> take advantage of the opportunity. They're meeting on Tuesdays um, to kind of put in their two cents and work together with the group a little bit more <coughs> instead of having it just be the, you know, an outside group of, you know, supportive parents coming in and trying to put it all together, which is hard. Uh, so I'm excited to see that, that work. We had an opportunity to meet with the fire department and the rescue the other day, and I think we've brainstormed some pretty cool things that they're excited about, and it's their opportunity to kind of recruit and, and get, get their word out there of what they actually do. So, so some of those things are happening. That's scheduled for June 1st, the Festival of Curiosity. Uh, we won second place in the Clink Challenge. I'm not exactly sure you know, how that all comes to be. I know I put all my cans and bottles in that one thing every day and 
and luckily people come and collect them and then they count them. But that's a pretty amazing <laughs> feat when you think about the number of people out there doing it. So we're actually planning a little kind of recognition for that. It'll be after break. Uh, at some point they're going to come and do that. We're wrapping up our state testing, which seems easy and it rolls off the tongue really easily, but that's, that really upsets the flow of a school. Uh, everybody has to go on different schedules and, and shorten classes and the, the office is this hub of you know, accommodations and kits and passwords and it's been interesting to watch how a different school does it and, and the organization that it takes. And it really takes a lot of people being very flexible, very organized to pull it off. So we're almost, that week's almost over and I know it's been hard for kids and, and staff. Um, some good professional development opportunities lately. It seems like I've had a, a lot of those days and we've had a couple of outside supporters in. Um, I know Kathy has done a lot to organize that, but a lot of around common scoring guides and, and continuing to work on our house at the middle school so we're ready to kind of, to kind of kick it off next year. Um, so a lot of that good work's going. We're heavy duty into the planning for the Chewankee, um trip, which they've done a lot of work, the sixth grade team. Uh, with the parent association and, and a bunch of people trying to really plan that well ahead of time so that everybody knows what to expect when they go. Uh, so that, that's been a pretty amazing process to watch, how much goes into actually the behind the scenes of it. And uh, continue to be impressed with just the local talents of the area, the kids, adults, the support, the Bye Bye Birdie play uh, musical, for example and the variety of people that are there, the variety of people that are on stage and included and, and working, it, it's just, it's, it's uplifting, you know, when you're going through budget seasons and all of these things to just go there for a little while and relax and watch, just watch it happen. It's kind of, it's really impressive. Um, I had the uh, pleasure and pain of playing in my first basketball bonanza, which was a pretty big community event. Uh, Myself, Mr. Doan, Mr. Phil, we were all, we could barely walk for <laughs> days afterwards. Uh, but it's impressive to see the amount of community that comes out to that. And, and you know, the people that I've seen in the IGA, like, hey, you're doing good. <laughs> you're walking. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I called my wife that night. I said, hey, either bring me a pillow, because I'm going to sleep in the car. Or come get me out of this car. <laughs> so it was bad for a while. But uh, things are going really well. It's, ex it's an exciting time of the year. The spring, kids are getting outside again. Uh, so, so things are going well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll fill in the model UN details. Um, we had three delegates who were awarded at the model UN in Dartmouth. Um, I believe it's Alex Hansen uh, was awarded who's a sophomore. Pretty sure he's a sophomore. Yeah. It's awarded, thank you. It was awarded best position paper. So the students in Model UN, they write a position and then they interact with other delegates representing different committees of the UN, um, advocating for that position um, and sort of negotiating a resolution around a position that they've, that they've advocated for. Um, Nicoletta Coop, who's also a sophomore, uh, won. Freshman. Thank you. Nicoletta, that's why I decided to put this first before you <laughs> leave early out. So Nicoletta Coop, who's a freshman, won Outstanding Delegate, and Raina Sparks, who is a sophomore, uh, uh, was awarded the Best Delegate Award, which is the Best Delegate for the whole, everybody who was there. So that's quite remarkable. Um, I will also mention, uh, last, night was, last night was Jazz Combo Night in the band room. Um, there were probably 60 to 75 people there in a very intimate setting, and it's really neat to watch um, young musicians from kids who are just beginning to learn how to improvise to seniors who have been doing it for a long time, and sort of watching that development of skills and comfort, because that's a, that's a, it's, it's a different sort of thing to do. Yeah, uh, it's like extemporaneous speaking, but with, a, with an instrument. Um, so there's a lot of science and math that you have to know and chords and all that good stuff. So that was really very impressive and neat. Um, but I wanted to focus, um, I'm glad Allie's not a senior because otherwise she would be giving me evil eyes. Um, and we are embarking on a journey um, in the direction of making up five lost days for seniors before graduation. Um, and I think board members got a copy of the message that I sent. but. 
Um, it was suggested to me that maybe I should just explain it uh, for purposes of the public. So there are 15 days starting yesterday uh, between now and early May when um, seniors, not all seniors every day, but seniors, there will be an hour added to each day and teachers will have the opportunity to invite, expect, um, claim seniors in a sense to come in for, for additional work, additional time, additional support, um, additional learning opportunities. So there are, teachers are being paid for their work in connection with this, it's not required of them, but they're being paid for it according to the rate that's established by the collective bargaining agreement, which is a very modest um, fee. Um, and when I initially put out an email to teachers um, about this idea, I had no idea if I was gonna get any response at all, or people would just think this is the lame brainest idea that they've ever heard of. Um, and in fact, we've got teachers in English, Math, Science, Social Studies, and World Language all participating. Um, so that's, that's pretty neat. And, and then we're going to be treating, inspired by some other school districts, passed along by the superintendent, we are going to be treating for official purposes the day of graduation itself as a, as a school day as well. Um, so then we have one more day that we have to make up and we've got some ideas about how we, how we can do that. Um, so teachers are doing everything from Ms. Medina and some of the world language teachers are inviting teachers, uh, seniors in for oral proficiency interviews, um, which are one-to-one in, one -one interviews that the world language teachers do with seniors. Um, Dr. Gret is inviting some students in his physics classes to do some labs around optics, which is a topic that he was otherwise worried he was not going to be able to get to, um, and it's a really cool topic. Um, Mr. Jordan and I are going to be sicking ourselves, because I just love this stuff, um, for a few tutorials after school about the Constitution in anticipation of the AP government exam, and other teachers are doing other things. That's just um, a few examples. So I do think it's, um, more, edu I, I, I feel comfortable that we're doing is educationally valuable use of time and not just making up days for the sake of making up days. And, and I, so I think it's legitimate. In my mind, it's like having an achievement period for those of you who are familiar with the achievement period at the end of the day, um, which is the way some schools organize their, their school schedules. So I feel comfortable with the way it, the way it's working, and I'm really thankful to the staff for stepping up and participating in, a, in an unusual enterprise and an unusual year for seniors. So, that's all. Thank you, Jeff, and to all the teachers who are, who are stepping up for this. I, I really um, am grateful that these will be meaningful days, and I'm glad for the seniors that they'll be able to experience um, finishing strong versus coasting to graduation. I think that's it's a good life lesson experience to have. It's finishing strong. Thank you. You look like you had a question, so I wasn't uh, sure. I, so sorry, I, Jeff. I did. You, 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 when you talked about some of the makeup data, I just wanted to confirm. So it sounded quite specialized. You're, you're confident you'll, you have appropriate things for all your seniors. So it, most seniors, so not every senior, in fact, not even close to every senior is coming every day, just as during an achievement period. Not all seniors um, access teachers for help during any achievement period. But over the course of the 15 days, I would say virtually all seniors will be called in. Not, there will still be some who are not. Um, I will say that disproportionately, with the exception of the world language teachers, teachers who are taking advantage of the opportunity are advanced placement teachers who are especially worried about having lost some time. But they are not the only teachers who are taking part in it. So, um, certainly a majority of the seniors will have been called in for one or several sessions uh, between now and the end of the 15 days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. So, there is so much going on. It's very busy. We're trying to um, um, focus on the many celebrations that, <laughs> that we have right now. Um, we've really been uh, coming together as a school over the past several months and starting to really define who we are, I think, as, as, as a family. Um, 
something that I'm, I'm really excited about. Our music teacher, um, uh, Mrs. Bean, has recently written a school song, a Pond Cove song, and she will be, which I think is a really big deal, um, some kind of a tradition that um, we all know and hold, and um, she is going to be teaching it to all of the students in their classes during music, and then um, our goal is to soon come together as, a, as an entire school and sing it together. So I just think it's really cool um, um, to see um, so many different community members from Pond Cove contributing to that, that feel of family. Uh, and and um, Becky Bean is certainly um, making a big difference for us because I think this is going to be a song that is part of Pond Cove for years to come. Um, so we're excited about that. Uh, also, that sense of community really shows through, um, just to echo what Troy had mentioned about the Empower Me testing. It really uh, takes a lot of coordination and effort and planning uh, and a lot of flexibility from everyone. Um, you know, every space is used, every office is used uh, for accommodations and testing sites and people have been so flexible. Um, so that is just wonderful to see. Our students worked really hard this year as well. I'd like to thank Sarah Forey Pettit for really kind of um, being the central, the center of that coordination for all of that assessment. Uh, this is a, a really big week that we've been planning for at Pond Cove for several months. So um, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we have um, an award-winning author, Melissa Sweet, visiting our school. And this is thanks to the PCPA and CIF. Um, and so she is, uh, she has written many um, books and she's working with students all week um, by grade levels and by classes and, and talking about um, what, it, what it means to be an author and doing various activities with them. And we, are, we have something fun planned for the end of the week um, to continue celebrating literacy. Um, we actually have a play that was written by um, our uh, very talented second grade teacher, Lisa Derman. And so the staff are cast in the play um, and it's, it's um, called Scenes from Charlotte's Web. And so I will be Mr. Zuckerman and Mrs. Forey Pettit will be Mrs. Zuckerman. And so we're gonna put on a play for the kids and we're really excited about that and the, the kids are too. That's all I have for tonight. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, let's see. I'll start with just explaining where we stand with um, our, our plans for ending the year. You know that we are making up nine lost days this year, um, which is, I, I don't know, um, that may be a record. It's a, it's a, it's a very large number obviously, and we put together a team of um, teachers and administrators to look at the various options that are out there. Um, one of them was to extend the school day by an hour. Um, when we looked at that, two things became a problem. One, we thought that we could maybe um, do it in 30 minute increments rather than one hour and just do it twice as long and, and get the same benefit um, of of one day for every um, five hours. But for reasons we don't fully understand, the state said they'll only approve that by one hour, not by 30 minutes. So that option um, was, was really not gonna work for us. Another idea was to have Saturday cl classes and, um, and that didn't work for us because a lot of our employees and a lot of families are, um, are, are busy and we understand that. So remember we said all along that we wanted these to be meaningful days with good attendance, understanding it wouldn't be necessarily close to, to, to normal, but we wanted a strong turnout. And without our teachers being able to be here, subs aren't gonna be anywhere near um, as capable, um, seriously, of providing that class on a Saturday as, as the teachers would be. Um, and 
so it just it just did it, it didn't work. The same thing was true for the this coming Friday. We thought that maybe this Friday, the, I think it's the 13th, would be a day that we could um, take and um, for families and for our employees. It's just a lot of people had this time booked and they were going to be gone. And so there really aren't that many options left. And um, we are going to stick with what has been our tradition, which is to simply add days at the end of the year. The last day um, will be the 22nd of, um, of June. And um, that's um, a good deal later than any of us thought. We thought I think we were planning with no snow days, getting out as early as the 11th, I think, of June. I mean, it would have been amazing, but um, it's still about when we normally have, and we, we have a few employees and a few families that already have, just can't be here that late, and we, again, understand that. We're, everybody's trying to just work together. It's gonna be fine, but um, I just want you to know that I think that without showing a number of days that we've actually put in to adjust our calendar, the idea of a waiver, this isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, the, it's very clear in the communication from the Commissioner of Education and the Department of Education, they wanna see an effort shown to capture and reclaim some of these days before they'll consider waiving. Well, we aren't doing that. And you heard from Mr. Shedd about what we're doing with seniors. I, I really, like, like you said earlier, commend the administration and the teachers for being uh, a flexible, uh, accommodating and, and um, figuring out something that would really be legitimate and useful to our seniors. So I'm quite proud of that as an alternative. And I think that we'll just move along, but the idea of, of, of a shorter year, I think is just not gonna happen. Okay. Um, on here, you have your annual April one count of enrollments that's in your packet. I think that we are at, I think, um, 15, uh, 197 maybe um, students and we're down year to year from last April 1st by a total of 14 students, which is less than 1%. I mean, it's basically, as you've been saying all along in the budget season, it's been flat, it's still flat. It's, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm, so that, 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 that's your annual report on, on that. Um, you're gonna tonight be asked to um, approve of, of the of Cape Elizabeth going forward with what's called the the Greater Sebago Educational Alliance. Um, there is a menu of of options of things that you would as a district want to consider being part of. These are not requirements. It's a menu selection. You pick and, and choose what you want to do, and you can back out. It, it, there's no, you're not committed for life. Um, and so we're, we're looking at food service, professional development, um, substitute teachers, so that would be training and sharing um, substitutes, which could be very useful to us, and diversity of staff. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be one that we would, um, we've said in the past, we want to do what we can to attract um, a, 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 a more diverse faculty over time and staff, so that's, that was the fourth one that we, I checked off. Um, I think this has some real potential, and um, I've missed a number of their meetings. I, I feel um, not as involved as I would like to be. There's, I just, you know, the, um, we just don't have an awful lot of extra people to, to share to go to these meetings, so I've missed several, but I, I, I really do believe, if you look at the list of districts involved, I think everyone, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good group. I think there's some, it'll be, it'll be um, in our favor to be part of this. And I want to thank you, Howard, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like you had very um, good foresight on on this last year when you decided yep. to be part of it. And now, as it as it um, proves right, I think those who are not a part of a regional group are being penalized. So they I are. want to thank you for your yep. forward thinking on this. Absolutely. So I, I had a, 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 some pleasant news this, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago. I learned that uh, Tim and Nancy Thompson, uh, longstanding members of, of your community, um, along with CIF, want to do what they can to come up with some annual commitment of um, a sizable amount of money um, 
to benefit the students and their parents, the community. We've had two meetings so far, and our feeling is that the, the, uh, the focus will be on, on mental health. And we think that is legitimate, um, very legitimate, and um, it's, I think there are things, so we have uh, employees right now that are being asked to come together from our, all three schools to help us kind of frame a, a long-term uh, proposal of what we could do to benefit students and their parents around the issues of, of um, that would fall under mental health. And our hope is to go back to this group by May with a proposal and actually have something in place starting next year. And then um, it would, I, I believe, continue for, for years to come. So it's, that's a lovely, oh, I know. So it's a lovely um, uh, offer and we, you know, we all really appreciate it. Um, let's see, another thing I'll mention, well, you're gonna see, well, okay. Um, so today I met with the leadership of CIF and, and they shared with me a list of proposals for the spring uh, of this year that totaled over $85,000 of, of ideas. And they, it seems like on average are funding around $20,000 per, per season. And they were just really amazed by the quality and the number of requests that are coming in this year. So I, I take that as clearly, um, you know, a glass half full. It's a problem you want to have that there's that many exciting, innovative ideas out there and that people are thinking and wondering about, what's well, like tonight with, with the greenhouse. I mean, you know, these are all lovely. This is what really is what we want to promote. Um, it's just continuing to, to, to think about new ideas, ways that we can make these even better for, for our teachers and our, and our students. So they, they, they've got a difficult challenge to um, select whatever they feel they can afford this, this spring, but um, they feel like I do, that my gosh, it's really impressive to see this number of, of, of really um, solid proposals. So that you'll be hearing about those. A number of those are over $10,000. And you remember, uh, some of you, that any, any grant over 10,000 comes here for your support. Um, I was approached today by, um, by the town manager um, Matt Sturgis, he came in at the request of the town council asking that there perhaps would be a meeting with um, the count between the council and the school board sometime in the new future, in the near future, in response to uh, issues and concerns that were raised by a citizen recently. And um, I'm, I, I will figure out what we want to do with that sometime in the future, but I want you to know that the council has made a request that through the, I think the chairman, um, that there be a meeting at some point to, to talk through this. Um, as, as Mr. Mandarese mentioned earlier about the, the uh, theme this week at the school regarding having a, a, um, a guest artist, uh, I think an author, her name is, I think, Melissa Sweet. Um, um, Cameron, Rosenblum said that if any of you could pop by the school tomorrow between 9 and 11, she'd be happy to show you around, you see what's going on. It, 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 it's very impressive. It's a lot of really neat integration. It's, it's, it, it's K4, it's everybody. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a big deal. So if you want to pop by tomorrow, she'd be happy to give you a cook's tour. 9 to 11. Um, that's it. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Howard. You bet. So next, we're moving on to item six, new business. May I have a motion, please? I move to authorize the submission of a part two application to the commissioner of the Department of Education to approve the formation of the Greater Sebago Education Alliance Regional Service Center, provided that the Cape Elizabeth Municipal School, School Unit's membership and participation in the Regional Service Center is subject to approval by the school board and by the voters of the town of Cape Elizabeth. I have a second? John? Thank you. Any discussion? I'd just like to briefly add, 
I fully endorse this. When this sort of mandate came down, I think it was quite concerning because when you force regionalization, right. you're often forced to tackle problems that are not regional problems. Right. And all of the things that are on this list um, are things that can be solved on a regional basis and will be a benefit to all in terms of those you know, f combined food purchasing, low incidence things for ELL, the um, right. uh, professional development, all of those things. Uh, are things that, that fit with a regional basis. So I, 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 I applaud the approach to it. I'm, I'm happy to see that the things they're tackling are regional things that will benefit from regionalization um, as opposed to um, doing it to, to, cons to, to consolidate for the sake of consolidation. Right. And I'll just add for the record that there are, depending on which um, area you're wishing to uh, work together on there anywhere from 10 to 12 uh, schools um, some close by and some not super close by you know, looking to work together to either you know get better prices on resources or you know better ideas on uh, sub training and, and and how to do that all those things so it's it's impressive yep, it thank is. you Uh, all those in favor? Okay. Item 6B, may I have a motion? I move we approve an unpaid leave of absence for the 2018-2019 school year for elementary teacher Marianne Harrington. I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, item 6C, may I have a motion please? I move that we uh, approve the following administrative procedure policy. This will be at second reading, GCF-R, transferring and hiring personnel. May I have a second? Any discussion? Just to refresh people's memory, um, this came to policy committee largely um, to make sure that um, procedures among all three schools were going to be the same or as closely similar as they can be. And um, there's a, a pretty large chunk of it that we're just following right from uh, the collective bargaining agreement. So that, you know, teachers and administrators are all experiencing. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Makes and perfect sense. Feels Thank fair you. and feels appropriate. Great. Thank you. All those in favor? Item 6D, may I have a motion? On this side of the table, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I move that we consider the action to approve the following 2017-2018 uh, athletic personnel nominations at the middle school Morgan Curve Outdoor Track. Matthew Caton for softball, Aaron Buderbaugh, the girls lacrosse seventh, and at the high school, Brian McDonald, strength coach. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you to these people willing to step up and fill these roles. Yep, absolutely. Uh, all those in favor? Okay, great. Item 6E, may I have a motion please? I move that we approve the Cape Robotics team trip to VEX Robotics World Championship in Louisville, Kentucky, April 25th to 28th, 2018. Okay. I second. Any discussion? Hooray, they're going to nationals again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it's exciting. Wish them good luck. Yeah. And <coughs> bless you. Bless you. Bless heard, you. I've heard through the grapevine that there's been pretty extensive um, fundraising to make it more affordable for the students to go, so I think that's great. I think we should somehow with them too. <laughs> you think what? I wish some somehow with them. <laughs> he needs more robots in his yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. Good point, answer. All those in favor? So maybe we should do this one. Right, moving along. Um, item 6F, may I have a motion please? 
I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of personnel to second year probationary contracts. I don't believe I have to read no, the parenthesis, <laughs> and I'm just going to um, read the names into the record. So at Palm Cove School, Jennifer Adams, Sherry McInnes, Melissa Richard at the middle school, Joseph V. Doan, Jake Hogovic, Sarah Kaufman, Morgan Kerr, Louise Lynch, Elizabeth. Did I say something? Okay. Um, Louise Lynch, Elizabeth Newts, Emily Piller, and Jill Young. At the high school, Danielle Grimes, Carrie Curtis, Sarah McEwen, Ginger Raspiller, and district wide, Casey Bereggi, Laura Rule, and Christine Winterbrook. May I have a second? I'd like to apologize to the staff members who I butchered their names. <laughs> Than me. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Um, and just, I guess, I want to comment that, um, that when a teacher moves into um, second-year probationary contracts, um, we we know that uh, the 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 evaluation process has been thorough and robust, that um, communication has been shared with Howard and Howard has shared it with us. So we're not just rubber stamping here, we're, we are having a thoughtful vote and um, approval. So thank you everybody mm -hmm. for your input on these teachers. All those in favor? Item 6G, may I have a motion? Um, I. I move to approve the superintendent's nomination of personnel to third year probationary contract. Pond Cove teachers, uh, Karen Jennings, Judy Mer Merriam, Catherine Zellers, high school, Jaina Robinson. I have or a second. Jana. Any discussion? No. Again, same holds true for these teachers. Um, may, let's see, all those in favor? <laughs> Item 6H, may I have a motion, please? I move that we can um, approve the superintendent's uh, nominations for personnel to receive their first continuing contracts at Pond Cove School, um, Kali Gallant, uh, middle school, Joshua Chase, uh, Joanna Payne at the high school, Asun Simpson and Elizabeth Thomas, and at the district, Rosemary Cooley, school psychologist. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? It's kind of an exciting moment for a teacher, so it this is, is a yeah. big deal. Yeah. Continuing contract, so yeah. congratulations to these people. I agree. Thanks for saying that, Elizabeth. You're right. All those in favor? Moving on to item 6I, may I have a motion, please? I, I, uh, I move to approve planting of trees on school grounds in memory of former middle school teacher, Danielle Kunert. Is that a second? Any comment, discussion? I think this is a lovely mm -hmm. memorial yes, to is. Ms. Kunert. Yeah. It's a great idea, yeah, so I'm glad it's happening. True. All those in favor? Okay. Item 6J, may I have a motion, please? May, 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 may I ask for an amendment on this? I mean, I think that you need to actually have a figure in this motion. Um, yeah. I don't see a figure. Mm -hmm. So when you make the motion, yes. I, I, I hope I would ask you to um, have an, an exact dollar amount. Um, it, it, you, you have it. Yeah. It's 20. Okay. So I'll, I'll read the number and then if, mm -hmm. if we need to amend it again, we will. So mm -hmm. uh, I move that we uh, adopt the 2018 2019 school board budget and related revenue components in the uh, net total of $25,641,276. <laughs> Exactly. Second. Second. Oh. We, did, we second together. We second. Okay. <laughs> um, any discussion? 
Uh, I, uh, since I have uh, comments from Kimberly Carr, who was unable to meet with us tonight, and she typed up her. I have. Um, Elizabeth has them. I have them from Heather. <laughs> so you go first. <laughs> Sorry. So on behalf of Board Member Kimberly Carr, she wrote it in the first person. So just. I want to start by thanking Howard Coulter and the administrators for all the hours and thought that they put into the budget this year. I greatly appreciate all of your hard work. Like many members of our community, when choosing where we would buy a house and raise a family, our number one priority was an excellent public education. We've been very happy with our choice. I am so proud of our educators. Not only the quality of education they offer, but the level of dedication, commitment, and care they show to our students. Many of the programs we offer are top in the state. In several instances, community members are volunteering their time and expertise to enhance what the school provides. These partnerships seem to benefit all involved. Indeed, there's a lot about which our community can feel proud. I strongly support the 3.1% budget increase. I support our schools and want to continue to provide a high quality education to students of our town. In addition, this budget provides an avenue to move forward with much needed renovations and safety improvements to our school. These renovations are necessary to maintain our tired looking buildings. While this is important to consider with regards to attracting new young families to our town, I think it's even more important for all of us who have already made that choice. We have identified that there is not a spending problem, but a revenue problem. In this time of national divisiveness, I encourage all of us to work together as neighbors and friends. It is likely that we will face a similar funding situation next year. I would love to see our community have more options going forward than either raise taxes or cut schools. Thank you. I will uh, read Heather Altenberg's statement. Um, she's also, sorry, to not be here tonight. And this is written in the first person also, so I'm Heather. Though I am unable to be present, I would like to share my support to my fellow board members and the proposed budget as it is presented this evening. We as a board have worked hard the past few months with the help of our superintendent, administrators, and other personnel to build a budget that I believe in, stand by, and can fully support. We have deliberated and explored options. We have listened and asked questions, and we always kept what is best for the education of our students while balancing the tax burden on the citizens at the center of every conversation. Through the process, I have gained clarity. We do not have an extravagant budget, but because of the lack of support from the state, the fiscal responsibility of education here in Cape Elizabeth lies in the hands of its citizens. It is certainly a delicate balance. I am hopeful that through the implementation of a senior tax relief program that was discussed at the town council meeting last night, this balance can be achieved. This program would support our most vulnerable citizens while continuing to provide excellent education to our students. These are extraordinary times, and I believe we are at a crossroad with education here in Cape Elizabeth. To choose a lower budget would mean drastically changing what our students deserve and what I believe the town expects and values. We have an excellent district with very talented and caring teachers and staff, students who are driven to learn, and an environment, as Jeff Shedd once says, where it is cool to be smart and learn. I hope we do not lose what is working so well for the youngest members of our community. Therefore, I am in full support of tonight's proposed budget. As we move forward, I encourage everyone to come to the parent forums tomorrow in Town Hall at either 9 a.m. or 6 p.m. to write your town council members, let them know how you feel about the budget, to attend the town council public meeting on May 7th in Town Hall, and most importantly, to vote in June. More than ever, we need your input. Thank you, Heather. So, I'll add a comment as uh, spending a lot of time with this budget. That, um, this is not a happy budget. This is, the, this is not a situation where you come out and you feel like, you know, we really got where we needed to go. But you know, you look out across the country in public education, which is something I treasure dearly and receive myself. 
is really in difficult circumstances. You look at West Virginia, Kentucky, Oklahoma, where they've had teacher strikes and walkouts. And in West Virginia, I think a quarter million students didn't have school for like a month. So when I look at our nine, nine lost days of school, I feel like, well, maybe we did okay. Um, but, you know, in, in our state, it's been continuing to be challenging. And here locally, you know, we've had a lot of turmoil. It's been challenging. If you look back, you know, we've, we have an interim superintendent. We went through and searched and found a new superintendent, and we're very happy with that process, but that's a lot of work and a lot of turmoil. We had two new principals at Pond Cove and the middle school this year, and uh, I think that those transitions have gone extraordinarily well myself. Um, you know, look at the, what the, the weather that we had with the late fall windstorms and power outages for days. And the winter snowstorms where we lost a lot of days of snow, it's, not, it's, it's been a challenge to stay even. And then this is the circumstance where we're trying to find our footings and set a groundwork where we can really go forward and continue to improve. And we've got a lot more work to do. You know, it's not like we're sitting here and we're satisfied. We're trying to make the best decisions to balance off what we think we can do, preserve what we can. What, what we can. Um, and what I've said before, I really value Cape Elizabeth schools. I think they were been have a long and uh, valuable tradition. And I did not build those schools. Building something that's that has that track record of excellence is really hard to do. And I'm happy to have played a part in trying to help to maintain that. Um, that's also a hard thing to do. Um, and unfortunately, I think the easy thing to do is to screw it up. And I, I worry that if we don't come together and work together to find solutions that we could screw it up. And this is not a one-year problem. This is this year's budget. But this points to problems that are coming down the road next year and the years after, and they're surmountable. But we have to work together to get there. And this is what I think is the first step. So like I said, this is not a happy budget, but I fully endorse uh, the budget as proposed. Um, so I would like to speak as well. Um, I am in support of this budget, although um, in, in years past, I can talk glowingly about um, how you know we, we worked hard and we were able to make some advancements. And um, I, I need to echo John's sentiments that this is, this is a bare maintenance budget. There's more that we wish we could do. There's more that this community expects us to do. But we've had to make some hard choices and those choices were not made because we wanted to make them. Um, the state has forced a revenue problem onto communities around, uh, around Maine. We were hit hard with this and now we were given a problem and we had to solve it somehow. We have this budget in front of us, I support it, but we are, we are, we are pushing some very important issues down the road. They're going to come back to us. Our buildings are very high on that list. Um, so it, it, it's, it's difficult. I, I too hope that we can come together as a community and decide what we value. And that this very, very unpleasant situation forced on us from Augusta does not turn us against each other because this is not an issue we have with each other in town. This isn't neighbor against neighbor. This is the state saying we don't really support the way that you do education in Cape Elizabeth. It's up to, to you all to fight over it and work it out. And I think that just having that discussion last night at town hall regarding um, assistance for, for people with difficulty with their property taxes is, is one baby step forward. Um, I believe that 
this that you know tax increases above us you know a certain percent for fixed income people is difficult I, I, I don't doubt that or um, dispute that but what I do dispute is that you solve that on the backs of children you, that's not how you solve it you solve it by helping the people that need help so I'm hopeful that we as a community can come together again I'm going to reiterate and and um, solidify our values. We care about a very high standard of education. The whole community supports this. And we also are going to take care of each other. We're going to support the people who need help. I think we can do this. I think that Cape Elizabeth has proven in the past that it will come together and work together for the good of the entire community. I too hope that people will attend the forums to to bring their questions, to voice their opinions, and I hope that people will um, show up to speak when they're given opportunities at town council and at the voting booth. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, w I would reiterate everything that's been said already. I think that we've... Um, we spent a lot of time on the budget. We've looked at, um, we've looked at, we've, we've left no stone unturned. We've looked at class sizes. We've looked at um, the the um, the state funding pro, uh, formula. Um, and I think that to have a reactionary, um, to 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 drastically change our budget as a reaction to what's happening at the state level would be, as John said, it would be catastrophic. I think it would be foolish. It would. Um, it would entail damage to the school system that we can't really undo very easily. So I think I support the budget at the level that it's at. I think that um, as a town, I think that that's, uh, I hope that that's what we stand for and that, um, that there's a, an agreement amongst the voters that we value the public education in our town and that we'll support the budget that will um, continue to fund it at the level that it's at. Thank you. You know, I like to say a couple of things as well. Uh, we we all, of course, majority of us moved into this town for education purpose, and I definitely have. And as Kim Kimberly has outlined, it is very likely that people will leave uh, the town if the education quality has been reduced. Uh, and even if I didn't have children, uh, will this will still support the education system here? Uh, our neighbors, our neighbor kids is our future. Um, very unfortunately, last night, uh, the house next to me, like there was one house between us, burned down and around 2 a.m. Uh, my mom woke me up and uh, suddenly the whole family woke up. We came to the driveway and uh, my son walks out as well, uh, sixth grader, and said, my friend lives there, he, he said he has a stomachache, and presumably he was worried. He says, my friends live there, so we said, no one is in the house, there's no car, and the police in the fire has confirmed us to us that everyone is safe. So yeah, we do, even if we don't have kids, we do care about neighbors. Neighbors care about one another, and education uh, for kids is the future. Um, and not just education. This education that we have in Cape Elizabeth, in my opinion, equates to some of the private schools that we have around here in the state. So the quality is equal. Uh, and just to summarize, budgeting-wise, I thank uh, Catherine quite a bit for side conversation, catching me up with all the questions that I had. Uh, and on the fly, she was able to answer some questions percentage-wise and everything uh, on the fly, which is awesome. Uh, but basically, it comes down to medium household is basically, if you give up a Netflix and an Amazon account a month, you're more or less covering this budget. That's like 35 or 140 bucks. That's how I see it. If I can control my household with fixed income, sacrificing those two things, for the sake of the kids' quality education, by all means, I will do it. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody, for your uh, comments. I agree with all of them, and in some ways, what I'm about to say reflects so much of what we all say, um, have already said. Um, I want to begin by thanking Howard Coulter and all of our administrators for their dedication, sensitivity, and respectfulness in building and molding this budget. Every year, it demands extreme amounts of time and consideration, but perhaps never so much as this year has. I imagine it feels like, I imagine it's felt like trying to steer a boat with your arms tied behind your backs. I would like to thank Catherine Mesmer directly for her tireless and thorough explanations, calculations, and modifications throughout the past two and a half months. You have helped all of us find our way through the complex intricacies of creating a public education by breaking it all down into the common language of numbers. I would also like to thank all of my fellow board members for your extraordinary commitment and professionalism in a role that literally requires hundreds of unpaid hours. When you stepped up to volunteer for the school board, I bet that most of you had no idea how much time away from your families you would have to give up, nor the emotional toll this can take. I was clueless. All I knew for certain was that I believed in public education and believed that it is the backbone of our country. I wanted to do my part. I still do and now more than ever. The cuts to public education in our state might suggest that we need to shift our priorities and demote the importance of teaching our children. However, I wholeheartedly reject this. We cannot forget that education is essential to a healthy, productive, and balanced democracy. Education makes our freedom worthwhile. So what do we do when priorities are not aligned? when things get so out of whack that you begin to question the need for a comprehensive education or the importance of serving all children. You stop, check your compass, and stay the course. Do not waver. Instead, communicate and remind others why this matters, and most importantly, work together in a common pursuit. Nationally, a strong education system makes our country vibrant, competitive, and relevant. Locally, it makes our town a community, a community so fortunate that sometimes we might forget how lucky we are. I believe that our schools are the foundation of what makes our little town so special and desirable. My fear and my belief is that if we allow state funding, or the lack thereof, to, to dictate our values and allow our schools to be steadily underfunded, that our schools will become relics and our community will dwindle. Without maintaining the public education system, our town expects and votes for year after year, families will eventually choose not to raise their children in Cape Elizabeth, property values will decrease, and the community as we know it will evaporate. I support this budget, but I believe that we need to come together and hold on tight to what we value most. I know that this budget is asking a lot of taxpayers, and at the same time, I know that this budget is asking a lot of taxpayers and that some of our community members will struggle to keep up. Times like these do challenge one's resolve. One of the things schools seek to instill in children these days is grit, an ability to maintain a strength of character despite difficult circumstances. When our children fail, we encourage them to be brave, persevere, and dig deep. I believe as a community, we need to ask the same of ourselves. When times are hard, we need to come together and uphold what we value. We need to help community members with fixed incomes by establishing mechanisms like a circuit breaker system. We need to model what we want our children to learn, and we need to find comfort in knowing that do, we need to find comfort in knowing that doing what is right is not always easy, but it is always but it always points us in the right in the best direction. Thank you. All those in favor? Whew. Oh, that was the last one. So, just moving on to committee reports now. <laughs> Any reports from anybody? We had an update from policy. Um, Hope, I believe you said there was no PAS. There, there hasn't been a committee uh, meeting yet this month, so no okay. update. Actually, um, policy okay. met and we began talking about our current homework policy. 
Um, we, it, it was, as we are continually re re uh, reviewing policies, it was, you know, on the agenda. Um, so we, we were fortunate enough to have um, building principals as well as a parent come and just talk about um, recommendations that are research-based and practices that are going on in our school department and that sort of thing. Um, we haven't come to any conclusions about any changes, but it didn't feel like there was going to be anything dramatic going on in policy. But it was a, a very worthwhile discussion, and um, I thank everybody for being there. We also began discussion about um, development of policy and practice in this district around our food services and nutrition. Um, so for a multitude of reasons, including um, religious beliefs, and, as well as uh, various um, health conditions, we were talking about having a policy of um, providing you know, specific nutrition information on the school menu so that um, parents and children can make uh, better choices. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else with committee reports? Pretty busy just, with other things. Just but. briefly, a note from the Finance Committee, yes. again, tomorrow at 9 o'clock and at 6 p.m. here, the forum for questions. Uh, and input on the budget. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. no, sir. So the IT policy of the IT committee uh, due to snow day was canceled once, and the other one uh, I had missed it, and um, I made sure that uh, Noah was aware that my email is on the list for the next next meeting, and the next meeting has not been scheduled yet. Great. Thanks, Noah. I have sir. one more. Uh, Spring School Committee had its last meeting and sent a recommendation forward to uh, the town council to um, uh, begin discussions with the historical society to take over as a potential tenant for the building. Congratulations for the conclusion of that committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, actually, thanks. Uh, Jamie Garvin did a lot of the work on that, and, uh, and uh, uh, all the members of the. the, the right. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to go over the dates again of upcoming meetings beginning tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. It's here in the town hall. Um, it will be one hour. Um, open to the public for questions um, about the budget. We will give a brief presentation, but most of it will be open to um, questions <coughs> and feedback. Um, tomorrow at 9 a.m. and tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Followed by Thursday, uh, April 12th at 7 p.m. We're having a joint workshop with town council. We'll be having a a preliminary discussion about the, some of the factors um, behind this year's budget cycle. It is in the Jordan Conference Room, but it is open to the public if anybody would like to come and participate. Um, then we'll be away for break, and then we reconvene on Tuesday, April 24th, where we have our formal presentation of the full budget uh, to the town council here in this, these chambers. And then I'm sure there'll be something else in between, but then the next meeting will be um, where the town council votes on May 7th, is it? No, town public council hearing. public hearing on May 7th, um, which I encourage everybody um, to attend and feel free to speak up one way or the other about how you feel about the budget. And I think that's it. I have a negotiations report. Oh, oh okay. So I think since the last time uh, we had a business meeting, um, the negotiations between the school board and the education association were able to close, uh, reach um, agreement for the bus drivers, custodians, maintenance, and food service workers. We have also concluded with uh, administrative assistance and ed tech one, so that's those two units, which is exciting. I think that um, speaking for the board and for um, the association, and you can tell people are pleased on both sides. And <laughs> thumbs up from Win. And um, so we are, hope my able, I'm gonna call her the leader now because <laughs> she's excellent. Um, we are um, embarking on the, the last um, negotiation that we have for this school year, which is um, EdTech two and three. Mm -hmm. So we hope to reach um, mutually beneficial agreement on that soon. 
Thank you, Elizabeth and Hope, for all, all your hard work and time on this. Thank you. And Catherine. And Catherine. <laughs> and Howard. And everybody. everybody. <laughs> Um, item 10, may I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, second? I second. All those in favor? Skip the discussion. <laughs>